Hello everyone, this is Crystal Lee with We Are Magic and this is another podcast, an episode of Crystal Talk. I have a list of topics I want to discuss for my podcast platform, Um, but Spirit Lately has been leading me to um, just flowing. So what, that's my heater. So what I have been doing is I have been asking Spirit what messages do I need to discuss for this podcast? And I use my Soul Truth Awareness deck. You know, my daily shadow work, if you still have been following my platform for a long time. And my podcast is basically shadow work. Like this podcast is dedicated to shadow work and healing and reprogramming and fixing the your life the way the divine meant for it to be so the soul truth awareness that was shown i mean literally flew out the deck today (laughs) was or is what boundaries need to be created or strengthened within my relationships and here's a message to create more healthy boundaries we must first get in tune with our own needs desires and feelings and believe we are worthy of them In your relationships, it's essential to know where they end and where you begin. Today's soul action. When we separate our energy from others, we gain clarity about what we really want. Then we stop doing things that no longer align with ourselves. If you are an empath, you can still be compassionate towards others without taking on their stuff. It is safe to trust that you are not here to fix anyone. Today's mantra, I have everything I need within me now, and so do they. I am worthy of my needs, and I set boundaries based on what's best for me. Let's dissect this. Let's dissect this. What boundaries need to be created or strengthened within my relationships? Now, I am a hermit. (laughs) I didn't know there was such thing as an empath when I was little. So I didn't understand why I would, when I would want to hang around with my friends all day. And by the time I got home, I was completely exhausted to the point where I just felt sick and I had to go lay down. This has been my entire life. I used to tell my mom when I was completely energetically and emotionally exhausted from humans. And I was at least nine years old when I was doing this, maybe earlier. I would tell my mom when they knock on my friends, when they would knock on the door, I would say, tell them, tell them I'm grounded. And mom's like, but I was like, just tell them I'm grounded. So, uh, mom would go to the door (laughs) And like, can Crystal come out and play? And mom would be like, she's grounded. Like, what for now? Because I kept telling her to say that. She's like, I don't know. And she slammed the door. So, yeah, I put my mom in a situation to uh, run off (laughs) my friends. (laughs) Because I just could not face it. I was so, I know it's hard to believe. And I'm still this way. Um confidence is something you're not born with it's literally a trait that you have to develop but um I was very shy as a young child I was very people grew up with me will vouch for it I was very bitterly and utterly shy so it was hard for me to make friends and it's even hard harder now like I don't go out and seek to make friends and they say introverts don't make friends extroverts adopt them and that is the truth it's like an extrovert will see an introvert and go oh i need to save them and yeah i need to pull them out of their own misery and out of their little turtle hermit shell and get them to fuck out of the house (laughs) through um disappointments heartbreaks through friendships relationships through all relationships in my life whether it be friend or romantic i have been hurt gutted destroyed Instead of learning from that so I can grow and, you know, know how to handle something like that the next time, I retracted and I wore it as a badge of honor. 
I wore pain and suffering as this is why the way that I am. Can you relate to that? <laughs> have you ever been that type of person? I, I have. And still am in a sense because I have not been in another romantic relationship since my divorce. So, you know, and I'm using the, oh, I'm healing myself. I'm on my personal journey, you know, as a ploy. And I've been doing that, of course, and I'm a lot better than I was before. But I can't keep using that as an excuse. <laughs> I just don't want to be bothered. That's what it is. That's what it is. I don't want to be bothered. I'm 47 and I just don't have time for shenanigans. You know, I've tried to date other people or just go get back out there, as they say. And when men are almost 50 acting ridiculous, I mean, what am I supposed to do? So, yeah, I just it's for me in this personal time, in this time of my life, it's just better if I stay by myself. <laughs> All right. So boundaries. The first boundary you need to create is um, self-love boundary, um, self-worth. If you're not comfortable with something, if you are unhappy in this situation, you have every right to say, no, thank you. And when they say, why? Because I don't want to. I'm not comfortable with it. And when they try to convince you to go, and they, you know, it's a different thing when we're being a hermit and we're like, oh, I don't want to deal with people. But when you know, when I'm talking about when a boundary has been crossed, a deal breaker and instead of looking the other way or turning the other cheek or you know love your neighbor as yourself like I always say we don't even know how to love ourselves because we were never taught to because we were taught that loving ourselves was selfish sorry guys I have to go blow my nose because I'm not going to do that on the podcast anyway so yeah, um, learn to love yourself, learn to respect what makes you happy. What are your boundaries? What are your deal breakers? Write this down. I need you to journal this this week. This is your, um, weekly shadow work, write down. What are your deal breakers as a friend, as a lover in a relationship, write them down. And when you write those down, put why you feel this way deeply, because this is the shadow work. This is you uprooting something. This is you write down all the times you have turned the other cheek in a relationship where you allowed something that was unfair to you, but for the sake of that being or for that person or for that lover or for that friend, write that down. How did it make you feel? Why did you do it? And when you do the why, you'll see that you are literally doing the shadow work. So now you're going deeper and deeper into your subconscious mind. You are uprooting a program that was placed in you probably from childhood as to why you feel this way. And it's probably bullying. It was probably peer pressure. And we still carry this shit up into our late 40s. You know, the people pleasing, um, don't want to disappoint others. You don't, especially with empaths, empaths, you know, you feel their disappointment. You feel their pain. You feel their regrets. You feel all the things. And we don't want to feel it. So we fix it. Because we hate to know that some something that we did made someone feel a certain way. Write that shit down. Write down all the times you basically just forfeited everything you felt about something and completely just succumbed to whatever they wanted. Write that down. Write down why you did it and how did you get to that point. That is shadow work. With this podcast, I will have you journal. You will journal things. I'll have you write questions down and make you dive deep and go in and dissect to the point where we can uproot the program. To create more healthy boundaries, we must first get in tune with our own needs, desires, feelings, and believe we are worthy of them. That's what I want you to do. Write all that stuff down and write it from your heart space. Because they've taught us that desire is sinful and it's not. It's divine. Desire 
I'm not talking about lust. Desire, it's that, it's a feeling inside of you where you're like, I must do this. You know, you love art. You love poetry. You love music. You're an artist. You're a writer. You're a creator. Um, you could want or have the desire to be a real estate mogul. You could have a desire to become a fashion designer. You know, all of these things are now limited to us because of the programming, the matrix programming, because they don't want everyone to be great. They don't want everyone to be successful. They don't want everyone to be powerful because who's going to be their slaves. So write that shit down too. write down the desires of your heart. As a child, go all the way back to your childhood, as far back as you can remember. And what did you want to be when you grow up? I don't care if it's 27 things because I had 20. I was going to be a ballerina. I was going to be an astronaut. I was going to be a scientist that worked at Area 51. I swear. Yeah, I was that kid. I was all about Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> portals. I watched Twilight Zone with my dad like this. Yeah, craziness. Like... I was about that life. I wanted that so bad for my life. So yeah, now I'm a, I can do podcasts and I can talk about it. But yeah, write that shit down. Write down. I don't care how crazy it is. I don't want to be a unicorn. Write it down because what's, what it's going to do is going to take you back to that memory, to that childhood. And what you're doing, you are, your brain doesn't know what the fuck's going on half the time. You know, it's just a super computer that's programmed, right? So it's going to take, when I say emotions dictate your life they really do i had um a religious person come in my comments on instagram <laughs> said that that is not true and emotions don't it's backed by science i mean they can strap you to a machine and they can read your emotions and they can see where the emotional buildup is where the energy buildup is where it's creating disease and sickness like your brain doesn't know the difference between hope and fear and excitement because excitement is the main energy it's the feeling of fear it's the feeling of happy it's you're excited your blood pressure goes up your face gets flustered you're you get the little electrical tick, 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 things all over you your heart rate goes up you have all these things you know you get sick to your stomach you know it's just like oh i'm so excited you know and your brain doesn't know what's going on until you say i'm scared or this is going to happen or that's going to happen or you're saying, oh my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get on this plane. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get to see my family and hug them and love them. And you know, when you get off the plane, you're nervous and you know they're waiting for you at the airport and you can feel the buildup in your stomach. And you're like, oh my God, you're not scared. You're excited. You see, but it's the same thing. That's why they say be present. So be present with your friends. Be present with your relationships. Observe. Observe to see if you are in one of those narcissistic friendships or relationships where you're giving and giving and giving and they're not giving back in return. They're taking away from you. Like, do you have joy when you're around them? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel like there's an even flow of balance and chi? Or do you feel completely drained and irritable and upset? Observe that. Mental note that shit. Put it in your phone real fast. Like, hmm, interesting. This is interesting. So when they say when we separate our energy from others, we gain clarity about what we really want. Then we stop doing things that no longer align with ourselves. If you are an empath, you can still be compassionate towards others without taking on their stuff. So um, I believe in separating your energy. I absolutely do. When you separate your energy from others, because you have to separate to gain perspective on what's going on. You have to know what you're feeling is real and you're not picking up someone else's emotions. You're picking up only your emotions. It was about three days ago, I had this overwhelming sadness in my heart and I couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. So all I could think of was it's someone outside of me thinking about me or trying to get me to call them or ugh, God, when you're have spiritual friends and stuff and relationships, this is the shit that, you know, this is what comes with it. And I was like, so 
annoyed and upset. I couldn't stop crying. I was devastated. So I took that time to talk to spirit. And they showed me, you know, I take, I, I use every opportunity when it comes to being present. I got to use every opportunity. Like, why is this being shown to me for me though? Like, okay, someone may be feeling me or wanting to talk to me, but why is this? What, what can I use in this situation for shadow work and personal development? Here we go. So basically, um, with my relationships, I am codependent. I am. And I'm a Scorpio, so I won't act codependent. I'm not going to act like I am. But, you know, yeah. They say, oh, well, y'all already obsessive and crazy. Oh, shut up. But I, it has nothing to do with me being a Scorpio. It has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that my dad, my first love, the person that was supposed to protect me, hurt me. And always. But that's why we do the shadow work. We do the shadow work not to wound us more, not to cause major depressive episodes. We do the shadow work because this is the only way we're going to find out why we are the way we are. Um, we, yeah, I had to cut the <laughs> video. So much shenanigans going on in New York right now. They're alive, they're awake. So... Yeah, by going all the way back to my childhood, I saw that my dad was the first issue. My dad was the reason why um, I have issues in relationships and how I have trust issues with men. Not just, well, shit, tell the truth. All humans, all humans. And, you know, and then from there, it goes to childhood relationships and friendships and, you know, the times I was hurt there. This is why journaling is so important. I'm telling you, journaling will make you, I don't know what it is about writing something down, but it works. So yeah, start journaling all of the things that happen to you concerning all relationships from as far back as you can remember to now. And then just ask yourself the questions. Make it a little bullet point. Like this is homework for you. You know, you do, you show up for everyone else. You can at least show up for yourself. And that way you can establish better boundaries. You won't tolerate toxic behavior. You won't allow any wounded spirit to come into your beautiful space to wreak havoc on your life. Okay. That's all I want you to do. Establish better boundaries. So remember the mantra, I have everything I need within me now. And so do they. They have everything they need. You don't got to fix anything. Stop trying to fix people. You want a project? Fix yourself. That's what I'm doing. I ain't fixing nobody else anymore. Absolutely fucking not. Nope. Not doing it. I am worthy of my needs. You are worthy of everything you desire. And need in your life. It is not selfish to want to have a good life and to be happy. That's the parasite agenda. They did that shit. Wake up. Wake up. And you religious people coming in my comments attack me and say, no, it's God. Well, God doesn't want you to fucking suffer either. That's another parasitic program. Wake up. Ye are gods. Remember Jesus said that. I am worthy of my needs and I set boundaries based on what's best for who? Them? No. Your relationships? No. What's best for you? We are in the era that it is time to wake the fuck up for real. The woke generation is not woke at all. We're still pushing separation and religion and shit like that and division and all the shenanigans. No, the awakened divine beings. You know you're divine. You know you are deep down. You know you are. We have been programmed to fail in all things. Work, money, career, relationships. They don't want you succeeding in a fucking thing because that's not going to help them feed off your energy. They, the more low vibratory you are, I'm not, not even low, high too. Even when you're doing the um, New Year's Eve celebration and, you know, everybody's coming together as a collective and 
We're all celebrating a new year. They feed off that shit too. You know what I'm saying? Like this is called being present. Now I'm not saying not be happy. Always be happy for yourself. But just be mindful. There's always a thing going on. There's always something that they're planning. <laughs> I'm not pushing fear. I mean, it's a truth. Like we're, we're energy. So yeah, they feed off of us to keep their little um, matrix program going. So yeah, just be present in all ways and all situations, not just the wokeness like you. Be present with you and what you deserve and what you desire and what you. I mean, damn it, you deserve the world. Like for them to tell you that you're a selfish piece of shit because you have desires and wants and needs and you desire to be happy and we deserve to be on this beautiful planet. It's not ghetto. It's just the operation system that's going on. The parasitic system is ghetto. But Earth is not ghetto. She is a goddess. She is Pachamama. She is Mami Wata. She's Gaia. She's all these things. She's mother. So what are we doing? Earth is not ghetto. Earth nurtures and protects, but she also destroys. So it's up to us on how we want to receive it. Be present with Gaia. And, you know, we like to make fun of woo-woo people that ground under trees. Do it. But don't do it with a, oh, this is stupid. Remember, everything's intention. You're sitting on intention. Ground, it's kind of cold now. It's wintertime. <laughs> but ground, be present with her. Look at the trees next time you're in the woods. You'll see them wave at. It's so cool. It's so cool. You see one leaf just going, if there's any leaves left where you're at. But yeah, like that's being present in this matrix program and all things to where, like I said, you walk around like Neo and Trinity. You walk around like Morpheus. You walk around like, I'm not part of this system. I observe it. I get it. But I don't have to make this my life. And you don't have to put up a bullshit either. Especially with fake ass relationships. I love you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Um, comment. Let me know what you think. And I know this was really, really quick. But things happen for a reason. I appreciate y'all so much. Remember, we are magic and we are one. Bye.